this time, I'd like to open it up to the floor for any questions from the audience. And if you could raise your hand, and I'm going to bring the mic to you. I know there's someone out there, at least one person. <laughs> My question is for all three participants, the male and the woman in the middle, and is that are young people uh, getting more involved? Like you mentioned, it's becoming cool to use mask weaving. And when you go to school, if you're in Santa Fe or the Pueblo, what do young people your generation think of permaculture in the future? And you're saying sheep is going away. Is there a way, you know, these youth camps, is there a way to bring more youth back into it, is this being successful so far? Because as much as using the resources that you talk about, the past, the different arts, the future is also important, but I didn't hear anything about the future. Um, there are a lot of challenges right now, I think, um, in a lot of the tribes, and some of the things that we're up against um, like I said earlier, our, our, our self-love, self-love to the point of we got to stay alive. And a lot of the youth are struggling with a lot of um, um, issues that are life-threatening, I would say. And so for me, I am looking forward to showing as a youth, I've been working as a youth mentor for the tribe at Santa Clara and we're doing murals on the interior of the recreation department, and this summer we'll be doing a, a mural in the um, <clears throat> in the gym area. But the point is, is that um, if we can remind them of of the aesthetic reality that we live in, then we can. I think. I think. I think we get kind of stuck as as I think as human beings we can often get stuck in a victim place. And we often um, forget the blessings that we have and the beauty that's around us. And so by offering artwork at all, any kind of artwork, I mean, talk about like, okay, let's bring back and talk about what, what these patterns mean and what are the metaphors and symbolism that refers back to our environment and how um, blessed we are with it, you know, then it gives them something to live for. It's that simple. And I think if we can give them something to live for at all, then we can start saying, here's more, and here's more, and hey, remember this, and hey, you want to go to the mountains and find some clay? Hey, you want to see how cool it is to, to, to build a fire and, and take that pot out and put water in it and drink out of it? It's beautiful how powerful these two things are that we all have. And we can use them to create beauty, and we can use them to create nourishment, and we can use them to perpetuate life. And even simple things like, instead of taking kids to McDonald's, have you eaten your own pet? <laughs> I'm ser you know, seriously, you look at food a whole different way when you're sitting there crying over your meal. Your meat tastes different when it's not objectified, when it's a subject, when it's something that you care about when it has some sort of energy to it, that wool, that yarn, the acrylic is so different because it's, it's detached. It's detached from reality. How do we take things, our car even, and make it ours and care for it and give it energy and love it? And, you know, I have a Jeep Cherokee that has almost 400,000 miles, still going strong, because I love it. Because it has an energy, it has a name, it has this soul. And when I get in that car, I talk to it and I say, hey, you and me, let's get there safe. You know? And if, I, if I'm mean to her, she's mean to me. She breaks down. And that's, the, that's a different way to think about the world because I'm in power if I know that by treating my car with respect, she's going to treat me with respect. And we start doing that to everything in the world. You know? And the, the more we can offer that to our youth from any direction. I mean, Española, New Mexico is the lowrider capital of the world. And these kids are losing anything. There's no sense of aesthetic anymore. They're dying left and right. It's like, guys, remember how cool a car is? 
any kind of sense of aesthetic, any kind of enlightened experience where you're driving down the road and you're proud. That's, that's even, that's sustainable, you know, because it kept them alive. It gave them something to care about, to have passion for. So that, to me, is the future, and that's where I'm going, you know, is I don't have my own kids, but I will be a ko'o to everybody. I'm a, I'm a super auntie. <laughs> Bring me your kids. I shall show them passion. <laughs> Well, I work with kids from um, preschool to graduate school. And um, if they're not from my native culture, which is most often the case in California, because we've moved around and, and it's hard um, that way, but to create that sense of attachment of some... Um, feeling about things around you is, is the, one of the most important things. Um, understanding where things come from, talking about that in class. My class doesn't, my art class doesn't cover just art. We talk about the environment, we talk about um, people's um, feelings about toward the art form. And if nothing else, they get, they get an appreciation for that. that um, art form, basket weaving. They, they get an appreciation. They might be the worst basket weavers in the world, but I'll tell you, they start looking at baskets in a whole different way. Mm -hmm. They start thinking about what could you make a basket out of? You know, what, what could be? What did, what did my people, and this is the, the biggest shock to me, is all, I know almost every culture in the world has had baskets, but most people don't know. They don't know, and so they have to go back and kind of research their own baskets and find out that Whoa, basket weaving was in my, uh, my part of the world, too. Um, there are a lot of uh, youth groups starting. I know that my sister works with um, children who are at-risk children, and she started as an artist um, with murals. And the murals brought in a sense of community because they're all working together on one goal. Um, she, she put art... Uh, materials in their hands for the first time. So now they had a skill they didn't have before. And they're able to use the creativity in a different way. And they've learned a new way to express themselves because a lot of these children are angry or sad or whatever. And they've learned a new way to express instead of acting it out and getting into trouble to express themselves. And they've found out the impact that that artwork has on the community or the greater community and the, as they have their art shows appear in, um, in the newspapers and they might talk about our disappearing salmon, they may talk about um, child abuse or whatever, but it's all in an art, art form and it, it's a talking, it's a thing to lead him to talk about it and then usually from that they start wanting to learn more about their culture and so one of the things that she did was they started uh, making traditional regalia. And then when somebody wanted to go, got to the point where they felt comfortable to go to a ceremony, their parents didn't have regalia for them, but they could borrow this regalia that they helped make and, and dance it. Because it's really important that we continue dancing these things to keep them alive, knowing that they're alive with those spirits of, of all those kids, what they, their little bit of spirit is in that thing. Um, and this is happening in a lot of places in California as um, tribes develop, they get a little bit more money from casinos or from whatever enterprise that they have. And this is not all tribes, but a lot of tribes have developed their own schools. And a major part of those are teaching cultural um, activities and uh, giving them a cultural education and uh, introducing them to their culture because in California they have to really revive a lot of it. They lost so much of it uh, between the missions and the 49ers almost wiped out the population of the whole state. There was close to a debatable between 300,000 to um, uh, a million native Californians before uh, anybody came and they got down to 15,000 before it started going up again. So, um, 
So they're having to revive their culture, but they're bringing their children along. As they learn things, they teach their children. And whether it's in the arts, like, like uh, this is from Southern California. Um, their instruments are, are gourd rattles. They learn to make those, they learn the songs. And, um, and then they go and demonstrate those. And you've given them such a feeling of accomplishment and I think that's one of the things that you're doing through the arts is empowering, empowering yeah. our younger generation to have a voice, to have an opinion, and to have a skill. And, 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 and giving them that chance to have a relationship to, with their community and with, with the landscape. Thanks, Kathy. Great. Do you want to add anything? Just quickly. Mm -hmm. um, it was mentioned earlier that I served a term as the chapter president. And, and one of the things that I, um, engaging with the youth and, and giving them an opportunity, um, they created their own um, group. And in our chapter, uh, we included them in the chapter process. Um, they had a seat as a voting seat to include them in, in, in the dialogue and all the decision making there in the community. And I know one of the, the biggest um, accomplishment for them was to really uh, see their community. Uh, we did a little um, uh, what we call a community drive-by. They're kind of, it's their language. But really we did a community drive-by to see farmlands, mm -hmm. to visit, oh, this is my uncle by clan. And to also visit some of the elders and to taste their food, some of the traditional cooking. So they had a collective of sort to where they came together um, on a weekly basis and, and learned how to cook. They learned fiber arts. They learned everything about sheep care and maintenance and also weaving. And so that continued on. It became a, a sort of a disease because uh, all the other chapters started formulating their, uh, their youth organization. And at the end of my term, the, the biggest accomplishment that they, they did was to, um, to organize a bigger one called the Northern Dene Youth Committee, which is in Shabrock because it's in the northern chapters, um, which encompasses about nine chapters. And, and all the youth come together uh, every Monday and they sit together and they um, think of community projects or they want to come to Rokady's house uh, and butcher, or they want to go into the hills to learn about why there's natural springs here, to learn about their ecosystem, their, the biodiversity of it, and how sheep ties into this all, and, and things like that. So we're giving them that opportunity again, which uh, for some reason we, we had left that out we had left that out of the curriculum in the schools. We had left that out and just in, even within our own communities. Uh, we didn't think it was important because we thought, oh, they don't have no interest in that. They want to go and sit at the computer or um, carry on their iPods. And, but you know what? There are things that they can do on those, you know, t uh, those gadgets that they like. And, and those are some of the things that we did with them, like designing rug patterns and, and going and, and bringing in uh, a non-traditional weaver. Uh, most recently, we did a little artist exchange with a, a fiber artist, a weaver by the name of Kathy Todd Hooker. And she has done some amazing work with very fine fabric. And some of her designs and her pieces um, talked to them because they could also do it. They didn't necessarily have to weave it the Navajo style with the Navajo designs, but they can make it their own. And, and there's some of the ways that we approached it because in order to communicate with them, you have to be talking like them, thinking like them, and being with them in that sense. Otherwise, they'll just push you aside and say whatever they need to say. And so uh, some of the things that we did in the mountain with the sheep camp is just giving them even though they're, it's in their backyard, a lot of them have never gone up there. A lot of them just kind of look up and say, oh, didn't even realize there was a road up there. And so 
The first few days were very tough for them because they wanted to get back to their iPods or their, their, their PS3s or whatever. But on the fourth day, they said to themselves or to each other, did you hear that? Mm. What's that? that? That's a bird. <laughs> and then you tell them the story about how the birds got their music and how we attained our music and how that can translate to the music that they like. So making those kind of connections for them you know, is something that um, we continue to do. We continue to build on it. And, and that it's important. We all have to engage that way. We all have to go back into our communities and, and make it possible and, and, and work with them. And, and so um, that's one of the things that um, we're most proud of right now because of the, the big youth um, that is out there that are wanting to. They do urge it. They do yearn it. They do want to do it. It's just a matter of, of, of asking and saying to them, yes, it's here, it'll stay here, and you'll take it from here for us. And so that, that's some of the things that we've done. Just in brief, there's a lot more that we've done, but um, that's just a, an example. Well, thank you. Let's take one more question, if there is a question. Just at, I have a, can you hear this? My daughter's head is a whirlwind. <laughs> And uh, she actually took Kathy's class, and I, when I sat and actually watched her weave, I, I looked at her a whole different way. She was a whole different person. It's like she went into meditation. Mm -hmm. And there was another little girl, uh, that's her friend, who was also <laughs> high sprung, and when she sat down and weaved, she was a whole different person. Do you get that with the people you're weaving with? Yes, a lot of times. And one of the things I just also want to mention, too, is there are some of the stories that we omit it. Uh, we don't tell them no more. Only because it's written in, in, in a weaver's book that says, only spider woman weaves. It's not the case. Um, they were both a counterpart, so they worked together on it. Um, there were certain responsibilities that spider man did for spider woman. And so together they wept this universe together, and it took the two of them. It showed teamwork, and it showed that they are capable of doing that. But yes, weaving is meditative. And also, um, just what you, given the example, uh, we get a lot of those uh, sort of, and then the parents themselves, when they see that, they, they're like, wow, you know. And so it, it, it's, it's just something I think that is really important to continue, to continue teaching. And earlier you had mentioned that um, I dedicated myself to this nonprofit organization a little over 16 years ago. Um, even though um, it, the struggle was there for myself to, to feed myself, but I thought it over and I said, hey, I have over 200 head of sheep. How can I starve? <laughs> and every year they, they lamb. So I didn't worry about that anymore. In fact, I hitchhiked here to be here with you all. You know, that sort of thing. Those are some of the things that, that I think about now. You know, I'm almost 50. Some people say, oh, you're not old, you're young. And I said, yeah, I'll tell me that when I'm trying to herd my sheep up the mountain every summer. But even there, um, we engage uh, the youth in, in, in taking that opportunity and in, in, in experiencing it. Some of them just have their grandmothers that told them the story about sheep, but they've never seen or been this close to sheep or even have t um, touched wool. So by allowing them and to, to, to give them that um, opportunity, I think it's really important. So we have a monthly spinoff throughout the reservation that we, um, we offer where we do all of that. We bring in our elders. Um, we sit with our youth. Um, sometimes we have to be the bridge or the interpreter. Uh, it does take time and effort, but it's all good. It, it, in the end, uh, the accomplishment is there in, in the contentment of saying, whoa, um, and that needs to happen because in a lot of sense, it's not happening in the homes. 
Um, grandma is just next door, but grandma doesn't understand English no more. So, oh, you know, just leave her be. Or that only sheep herders are grandmothers with torn dresses and um, holy shoes. It has nothing to do with Sunday. But, you know, that's their perspective. Um, only because they don't know or they've never been out in, in the hills with the sheep. When you follow the sheep, there are just so many things that you can learn. All the edible plants, all the plants that make this particular kind of dyes. Um, some are made into tools. When do you gather them? I mean, by then, they're like, whoa. And it's important. We must continue that. And we, we are doing it. But it's a slow process. Um, it's been um, a slow process for us, but even more so with providing the, the youth the opportunity to form as a collective or as a group. It's, it's been a great, it's been a great success for us. So we're quite happy with the work that the Nebe Enoch continues to do. And it is a nonprofit organization. Um, and just to mention the four ladies who started this um, nonprofit organization had said amongst themselves, hey, we can do it. We don't need to look at our Navajo Nation government to help us sustain uh, the sheep life ways. We have hands. We have our brains to think with. Um, why can't we just do it? And so that's how they form. And then from there, um, the torch got passed on. And, and we kind of have it in the northern part of the reservation, but the torch can, it's like the Olympics. Then I don't know where the torch is headed. Maybe we'll pass it on to DY. Who knows? But that's one of the great things with the Nebe Enoch. And, and that um, we're happy that, that things happened that way. Well, thank you, Roy, Rose, and Kathy for being here today. Um, I say I really appreciate your participation. Let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> thank you.